I uh, gotta like this guy. Just eight four. He's gonna stick around. I agree. You wouldn't expect this kind of a play from a guy that's got a master's degree in chemical engineering. And right now, playing in his first ever WPT event, he's showing he's got what it takes, man, to get to the top. Yep. And Max has bet this. He's betting 225 with ace high. Ralph with an inside straight draw. And he's going to speculate with a call. And now a three of club comes up on the turn. Max still has the best hand with ace high. And as you can see, Ralph now has the open in straight draw. Max is going to check. And Ralph checking behind him to the river. Can Ralph hit here? Oh. Yes! The deuce comes off. Ralph has made a Whoa. straight. Action's on Max. Now he's got two deuces now. Not much better than the ace high, really. He's going to check. But there's no way Ralph is checking. He's just trying to figure out how much can I bet to get this guy to call. Wow. Almost play any hand. He does, does so, and then he makes something work out of it. This time he's betting 525. That's the beauty when you get away with a few bluffs. Well, Vance, he gives himself a chance to win pots, yep. either by bluffing or catching cards like he's done here. The poker gods come back to please you. Max can't take the heat. And Ralph Malik now sprinting down the stretch here at the Legends of Poker. As you know, for the past few seasons, we followed young, dynamic poker pros as they begin to make a name for themselves in the poker world. One of these players lives right here in Los Angeles and has aspirations not only on, but off the felt as well, as we see in this edition of Ones to Watch. We're the ones to watch. We're the ones to watch. Wants to watch. I am Dee Dozier and I am from Auburn, Alabama. Dee is the sweetest Southern Belle that I have ever met. Dee Dozier's uh, a really bright, funny, cool chick. She has such a friendly, warm energy. People would call me shy, I feel like. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would never happen. <laughs> I moved to LA about 10 years ago. I absolutely love it here. It gives me the opportunity to pursue both my passions, music and poker, all in one city. Okay, I think up until this summer, my reputation as a poker player was just, oh, she's just this dumb girl that plays poker and laughs a lot. I used to talk a lot at poker tables. Yes! Oh, I have a lot to learn. Well, I'm having a good time. That's all that matters. But this summer, I, I think I committed to it. I really committed. I lived with two poker players all summer, Taylor Von Kriegenberg and then Mike Sowers. They're like, you have to pay attention. You have to constantly pay attention and be watching people and learning from them. And now I'm, I'm just very focused. Now, is this your first cash on the WRT? Yes, it is. Yay! Sorry, that's really loud. Yeah, I finally had a good year. <laughs> I finally made some money. <laughs> If I'm not playing poker, I'm making music. That's just what I love to do. Dee has the most angelic voice. I love music. I love it. I love making music. I think it, it taps into a part of me that I don't share with people on a day-to-day -day basis. When I am in a recording studio, I feel so much happiness. And then we lay the guitar, and then we lay the piano, and then I do my vocals, and then I come in and do background vocals. And they edit it, and I get to hear it for the first time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I wrote that song? That, that's, I wrote that? It makes me feel complete, like I have purpose, you know? I think uh, creative types are some of the best poker players. She has that artistic drive to her. And someone who is a very artistic background, they may do something at a poker table, to me, seems so, uh, like it's lacking logic. But really, it's so much a higher level than I can understand. And so those creative thinkers are usually your toughest opponents to play against. Grammy or poker title? Don't make me do it, I can't choose. Yeah, my little love shoe. Yeah, my number one. Never be my number two. I love you so. I'm Tuba, one of the Royal Flesh Girls. Stick around for more of the World Poker Tour. This episode of the World Poker Tour is brought to you in part by Vegas.com, 
Vegas.com. Do Vegas right. I'm Brittany. I'm a Royal Flush girl, and I'm at the Bicycle Casino in Los Angeles having a blast. This entire week has been awesome. The Bicycle Casino is beautiful. It's got an awesome poker room. We had a chance to play Ultimate Texas Hold'em, which was so cool. The Club 21 girls wear these pretty dresses. I've never seen dealers all fancy and pretty. I got some pretty good hands, and it's so easy to win money. Oh my God. <laughs> We stepped away from the tournament floor to play a round of golf. Yeah, I'm better than some of these poker players. <laughs> cool. That's good, that's good. Thank you! Rio Hondo's beautiful golf course. We couldn't have asked for a better time in LA. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour and the Legends of Poker. Dwight Pilgrim, please report to the driving range immediately. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm not sure he should even go there, Vance. Maybe. Golf is just not his game. Stick to poker, Dwight. All right, back to the table we go at the Bicycle Casino. And right now, three players with almost the same amount of chips. Amazing contest we have here tonight at the Legends of Poker. Certainly anybody's game, no doubt about it. Action on Ralph Malik. He's got seven, five of diamonds. Well, we know this guy's a very creative player. We've seen that time and time again tonight. And he's going to raise here to 300,000. Josh Hale now. The recruiter, the headhunter, by profession from San Diego with a queen five of clubs, is making the call. And now Max Steinberg. Well, 825000 in the pot. Cost him another 150 to call. So he's getting priced in. He's going to call. So we have three-way action. They are splashing around here as we go down the stretch here. Jack-10 deuce on the flop. Helps no one. And Josh is going to check. Check, check. And check. Ralph will not make the continuation bet of Queen of Diamonds. That's good for Josh. He's hit top pair. But Josh is going to check. Max checking. And Ralph checks as well. Okay. Just surprised neither one of the seven highs will bluff at the pot. It's the only chance they have to win it is to bluff at it. Three of hearts on the river. Josh going to check again. And again checking the two queens. Going to give one of these guys a chance to bluff at it. Come out, come out wherever but you are. But they just waved the flag. Yeah. And good for them for doing so, because Josh would have called them with two queens, and they would have lost some money. But Josh taking down that pot. The non-professional from San Diego. First time ever on the World Poker Tour, Josh Hale. You guys are the best. You always know. It's so amazing today. Getting close to becoming a legend here at the Legends of Poker. I'm not scared to play any of these guys, but it uh, is kind of a, a mental game, wondering what they think of me. I assume these guys probably have some kind of respect for my game now, so I'm not sure I can uh, represent playing the bad amateur anymore, but I'll try. <laughs> well, it's hard for the bad amateur theory to work when you're down to the final three of a WPT event, Vince. People know you got to be able to play some or you wouldn't get this far. Oh, he can play a lot. This guy's a very clever player. I'm impressed. And right now, Max Steinberg, first up to act. He's got A7, 24-year-old. This is only his second WPT event, his first cash, of course. And we're going to raise on the button here with the A7. And Ralph finally going to fold a hand. 425000 And Josh with the Jack-9 oh. will make this call. So A7 in against Jack-9. Josh trying to hit some kind of flop. Let's well, come Ace-Queen-Jack. So Josh has flopped bottom pair, but unfortunately for him, Max has flopped top pair. Josh is checking, and Max looks like he's getting out the continuation bet. He's hit his aces. He's going to push in 425000 Josh Hale, though, will make this call. Josh just wants to test the water one more time and see what happens. Six of spades on the turn, helping neither player. Action on Josh. He checks again. Max is going to give him a free card, but it's okay if you're Max. Three of clubs on the river. Josh going to check. Well, a possible flush and a possible straight throw out there. Surprise Max checked on the turn, but it's obvious he's now got the best hand when his opponent checks again on the river. 
Max is going to bet now 650000 as a little value bet, and he's going to get called off. Well, That's Josh, fun. hoping he's got something like 9-10 where he's drawing it up and down straight. That's not the case. He's got the aces. And again, Josh not thrilled with the way he played that hand. Well, he had a feel that Max wasn't that strong. He was incorrect that time, and he has to pay for it. We're in the wee hours here at the Bicycle Casino in Los Angeles. What an event we've seen all week long. Action on Ralph Malik, 35-year-old, first WPT event ever. He plays with almost anything, and this time with a jack, six of spades is going to raise the 300,000. Josh has folded, and now Max with an ace jack is just going to call. No surprise he doesn't raise here, knowing a guy could raise with a lot of different hands on the button. Well, the flop comes up 10 9 deuce. Max has nothing now, though. His opponent bets here are going to be hard to continue with ace high. Max with his ace high is just going to check, and Ralph with nothing, is going to make the continuation bet of 325. And look at this. Max just feels like his ace jack is the best hand, and it is. Yeah, good he ace. has made the call. Pretty incredible. Turn card is a king of hearts. Well, both players have a gut shot straight draw. Queen would give him a straight, of course. Give Max the best hand possible, but again, goes check, check here. Yep, Ralph not going to push there, and down to the river we go. Oh, the queen comes off. Holy mackerel. This is going to spell trouble for Ralph. He's made the king high straight. Unfortunately, his opponent's made the ace high straight. Oh, man, Max has the nuts. Well, he is going to lead out and bet. He's got a guy that has, oh, man, this could be very, very interesting. Max is going to lead 900,000, Mike. And now, even if you're sitting in Ralph's seat here, you're thrilled that you made the king high straight. But if you think rationally, you know a raise is not going to do you any good because there's no chance your opponent's going to call you unless you're beat. I mean, unless he's got a jack in his hand, which means you're not gaining any value. Whoa. But he's doing it. He is betting three million here. And now you know Max is going to go all in, obviously, with the best hand possible. He is just licking his chops right now. I want one. There he goes. He has gone all in, and now Ralph has put himself in a horrible place. Well, Vance, it's pretty easy if you call? think about it. And he's calling it. Really? It's a bad, bad mistake by Ralph here. It's, it's going to break Ralph. Cost him the tournament, Vance. He's going out in third place. He was playing the best at the table all night long. He compounded his mistakes in that hand. You shouldn't raise even though you made the king eye straight there because your opponent can never pay you off You're unless right. you got a jack in his hand. Absolutely right. When he raised you back, he must have an ace jack. You have to have the discipline to throw the jack eye away, the straight away. He didn't do it, and he's out. How it goes. Good. All right, well, he's got to be a third place finisher. Going to pick up 192,000. He's in a total state of shock, and right now he's talking to Matt Savage. Ralph, kind of a tough ending to an incredible night for you. All of these players, to a man, said that you were one of the toughest to read, a player that they never knew where you were at. What do you think? You know, I'm new to the live, I guess, tournament scene. I've been playing cash games for a while and then online. But, uh, yeah, a lot of these people, I guess, don't know me. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can keep playing some of these and continue to have some success. Appreciate it. Well, I really think you earned a lot of respect here tonight on the final table. I'm sure we're going to see you again on the World Poker Tour. Congratulations. Thanks, Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Thank you. Kimberly, back to you. That'll do it for Ralph Malik, who's out in third place. We're now heads up with Josh Hale and Max Steinberg getting ready to battle for the title. Heads up action from the Legends of Poker is next on the WPT. The WPT Foundation is dedicated to supporting great charities around the world. Now you can help the WPT Foundation raise money for some great global causes. Check out all the incredible prizes, trips, and VIP experiences available through our online auctions at WPTFoundation.org. Uh, my nickname is Number Two because I'm an identical twin and I was the second twin out. And there's also other reasons. I kept getting second in tournaments that I'd play, but now it's just a total joke because I won a bracelet this summer. I'm not Number Two anymore, Number One now. Hopefully Number One today too. <laughs> As is the custom on the World Poker Tour, when we get down to heads up play, we have our money presentation. So show us the money! The money! Out come the beautiful Royal Flush Girls, Angelique, Brittany, Jeannie, and Tuba. They're putting out the cold hard cash on the table, Mike. And a lot of money it is. The runner up tonight is going to get about 300000 The winner's going to take home a half a million. 
get an entry into the WPT World Championship at the end of the season, as well as get his name engraved on that WPT Champions Cup, where he'll be alongside the legends of the poker world. Oh boy, 11 years at the Bicycle Casino. It's coming down to this event right now. Who will be the champion? We will see in just a few moments. Heads of action here. The Legends of Poker is about to get underway between Josh Hale and Matt Steinberg. During the break, Matt Savage had a chance to speak with both players. Josh, you started the final table day with a huge chip lead, and now you're short stacked, but you got heads up. How are you feeling going into this heads up match? I feel pretty good. I mean, I'm happy to be here and uh, looking forward to uh, maybe be on the right side of a cold deck here against my buddy uh, Max. Are you going to quit your job if you uh, win today? No, I, I like what I do, but uh, this will definitely be fun for, uh, for, for the hobby, yeah. We're here with Max Steinberg. He started off the final table as a short stack. Now you're the chip leader. And going into this, you said you were the favorite to win this tournament. Why? I would say I said I was the favorite. I just thought if I got a few chips that uh, I felt like I was the best player at the table and that I could do some good things, and yeah. that's what I've done. Do you think that validates you a little bit, maybe, you know, takes you to the next level and where you go from here? I don't need anyone else to validate me. I validate myself. I know that I'm a great player, and so that's enough validation for me. So I don't really care. <laughs> Confidence. I like it. Good luck to you. Heads up. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Pretty astounding that it's come down to the two guys. One came to the final table with the big chip lead. The other came to the final table in last place. And now the guy who came in last place has a three to one chip advantage over the other guy playing for the title. Max Steinberg is the chip leader with 13.8 in chips, just down to about 4.8. When he's gonna take home 500,000, runner up about 300. And now the antis are 25,000, but the blinds are up to one and 200,000. Here we go. Max to look down, first to act. He's got a nothing hand. But does he have the guts to raise with it? Apparently, yes. Makes it 500,000. Well, these guys Come have got on, Wild Bill Hickok sweating their play here, Max. Yes, they that do. Trophy. Now, look at this. Josh with ace-queen just says all in, and that's going to work very nicely in hand number one of the heads of battle. With intense action and a couple of missteps, it's that time of the night where we turn to our Rod Deal analyst, Tony Dunst, for some chalk talk on the play we've seen thus far in this edition of the Rod Deal. If you just tuned in, you might be wondering how exactly Max Steinberg has such a substantial chip lead going into heads up. Has he been crushing the final table all night, or was he just the guy that ran the best? As it turns out, Max's lead is partially the result of his thoughtful play, and partially the result of a huge gift he received from the guy who moments ago was second in chips. Let's break it down. With 40 blinds to start the hand, Ralph Malik raised Jack six of spades on the button, and Max made the call from the big blind with ace jack. The flop and turn play were pretty straightforward. But it's the river where things get exciting. Both players make a straight when the queen of clubs rolls off, but Max makes the nuts with the ace high straight. He fires a healthy bet of 900,000 into 1.4 million. And after thinking it over for a moment, Ralph raises to 3 million, leaving himself only 2.1 million behind. Max takes a moment so he doesn't appear overexcited, then moves in. At that point, Ralph knew something was wrong but he had invested two thirds of his stack in the hand and he had the second nuts in a spot where it's difficult for his opponent to have the nuts. So he decided to call the rest off and was eliminated as a result. But Ralph's major mistake in the hand was the initial river raise. With four to a straight on the board, Max will fold every time he has worse, call every time he ties and raise the few times he has the nuts meaning Ralph can't actually get any value by raising this river. Worse yet, he could call this river and still be tied with Josh Hale. But instead, he's gifted Max the chip lead and insured himself a $300,000 pay cut. So remember, don't just raise because you have a strong hand. Take a moment and think about what worse hands call you. And if you can't come up with one, you're about to spew. Well, Tony got that one right on the raw deal, that's for sure. Totally agree. And even if you do raise with the king high straight, you must have the 
discipline to throw the hand away when your opponent moves all in over the top of you because he can only raise there with an ace jack. All right, let's get back to this battle though because right now, Max Steinberg with a king jack this time. He's gonna raise it to a half a million. But Josh from San Diego, non-professional with an ace three behind him. Well, ace high, strong hand playing heads up poker. Just how strong? I'm all in. Wow, he's gone all in. And that is going to put huge pressure on Max right there because Max knows he's got a nice chip lead now, but if he plays this pot and loses it, his opponent will have the chip lead. It's all right, don't worry about it. Well, that is a lot of pressure, and it is going to work for Josh Hale. First time ever on the World Poker Tour, and he's shining here tonight as his fans get excited. Pushing his man out with just ace high. Well done. Well, Max playing in only his second WPT event, so... Inexperienced prior to getting in this WPT event, seemingly not a factor for these guys. All right, back on Max. Takes a look down at a queen six. He's got the button. Blinds are 100 and 200,000 with a $25,000 ante. And Max has raised to 500,000. Josh with a queen deuce of hearts has called. And he quickly makes the call, wants to see a flop. And it's come 10, 10, six. Josh checks the flush draw. Max has hit a pair of sixes. He's going to bet, but Josh has got the four flush. You love that ten of clubs, don't you? I would expect some fireworks there. But this could be the check raise, man, for sure, with the flush draw. It's 550 to call. Or do you want to get dangerous and make a push here? If you're Josh with the four flush, he's looking back at his cards. What does that say? I'm all in. He says all in. It says he's going all in. Well, now, if you're Max, you got a sword out there. You look back, see if he had a 10 or if he had two hearts. If he think he had two hearts and you're looking to gamble, you might want to go with the two sixes. On top of my bed. And he's well, analyzing the table talk. Call. And he's going to make this call. Wow, he made the call with two sixes. Didn't think he'd re-raise all in if he had three tens. Would just call or make a smaller raise. But because he went all in, I'm certain that's the reason Max called him there, thinking his sixes were the best hand right now. Well, they shake hands, but Josh needs to hit a heart to stay alive. Legends to be made right now. If Josh wins this pot, he'll be the chip leader in this heads up battle. Here we go with a turn. Four diamonds comes off. Oh boy. Max Steinberg's got to dodge one more card to become WPT champion. He's just got to dodge a queen or a heart. And don't forget, he started as the low stack, the short stack at this table. What a comeback this would be. He's one card away from this championship. Here we go, Mike. Everybody on their feet. Here comes the river card. And the river card. It's a heart. Oh! Josh Hale oh! gets to sit back down with the chip lead. Wow. Well, Vince, you just wonder about some kind of fitting justice there. Max Steinberg stayed alive with six players left when he had to hit a river card to stay alive. Josh Hale doing it right there to stay alive as well. It is never easy on the WPT. Stay tuned, the heads up battle will continue from the bike. We're coming back for more on the World Poker you, Tour. People don't play real poker on social poker sites because there's nothing to win. On ClubWPT.com, we play real poker for our share of 100000 in real cash and prizes each month. It's real poker for real players. ClubWPT.com, never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed.
welcome back to the Bicycle Casino and WPT's coverage of the Legends of Poker. The race for the Season 11 WPT Player of the Year is already in full swing, and tonight's champion will leap into the top spot on the leaderboard, overtaking both Anthony Gregg and Marvin Rettenmeyer as they'll earn 1,200 points for their victory. We will be keeping an eye on the standings all season long, but now it's time to get back to the call of the action with Mike and Vince. Well, there you see the chip count. Josh Hale now the chip leader with about a two to one chip advantage over his opponent, Max Steinberg. Yeah, things have turned around here at the bike. To the hand we go, Josh, now with a pair of nines, just like that. Well, hitting some cards right now, and what a time to hit him. Playing heads up for a WPT title. It's going to make it 500,000 to go. Max going to peek down at a king seven off suit. He has got to be stinging from that last hand. Yeah, he's been tripping over himself a little bit here in this heads up battle. Nothing seemingly going right for him so far. He's just one card away from a championship. Wow. Now he's going to raise with the king seven. Yeah, like 1.3 million. Vince, I think with two nines, you just ship it. He's going to look back down, and there he goes, all in. Yeah, if the guy's got a bigger pair than you, he's just got a bigger pair. And that is too much heat. Mike mucks his hand. So another 1.3 million max wilts away there. Well, Josh Hale on quite a roll in this heads-up battle. But Vince, he is holding over the other guy, definitely getting a good run of cards at the right time. All right. Play goes to Max this time. He picks up ace high, just at ace three. Caps his cards. And he's going to press. Makes it 500,000. Now, Josh with yet another pair. You're only supposed to get a pair once out of 17 deals playing Hold'em. And just had two nines the last pot. Picks up two sixes this pot. But this time just opts to call. Going to see a flop. All right. Mixing his game up pretty well. Let's see if it works for him. Now flop comes eight, deuce, deuce. Josh out in front with the two sixes. He's going to check. Now Max, of course, not hitting anything there. Well, but Vince, you think the ace high, probably the best hand here. Yep. You think your opponent would have re-raised you if he had a pair in his hand? So I don't blame him for betting here. His opponent could easily have something like queen 10. You hate to give him a free card to beat you. Oh, yeah. Continuation bet in order right now. Smaller. And he's going to bet and a re-raise. All in, of course, by Josh. He's trapped him. Well, Max cannot call again, I don't think. What can he really beat here? Except a possible flush draw, but... Mm, you have an eight, I guess. Actually, I don't guess. I think you have an eight. Pretty close. About the same thing. Not quite. Yeah, he definitely have an eight. Okay, definitely wrong, but a good lay down. <laughs> yeah. And Josh Hale's going to take down another one. Well, he widens that chip lead. Now has over 15 million in chips. Max down to just about 3 million. So let's see if Max can turn things around the way Josh did. Incredible. Another big pair here for Josh. This time two jacks. Chris. And he is going to make it 5.50 to go. But Max has a super hand himself. Goes all in with Ace King. Well, all in and a snap call, of course. Doesn't matter who you are. You pick up either one of these hands playing heads up poker. You're going to get your money in the middle and hope for the best. <laughs> Max in a race situation for his tournament life. Remember before. It's pretty one. With six players left, he had to catch a king or a jack on the river to stay alive. Now he's got to win a race to stay alive. Let's see if he can do it. I'm having so much fun. I want to keep playing. <laughs> All right. Ace in the door. No. Ooh. Now it's come eight, eight, nine. Well, that's good so Josh. far, so good for Josh. He is out in front with the jacks. He's just got to dodge an ace or a king. Can he do it? The non-professional. Two running eights would also win it, obviously, for Max. But Got this tournament in a $400 satellite with a huge chance here. Uh, five comes off. We are down to the river card. 
Max Steinberg needs to catch an ace or a king on the river to stay alive. Otherwise, we have a new legend here, Mike, at the bike. Here we go to the river. They are chanting his name. Josh Hale, one card away from being our champion. It's a jack. Josh Hale's made jacks full on the river. Incredible. To take down the hand and become the Legends of Poker champion. And Josh Hale getting mobbed by the Hale Birds as our runner-up Max Steinberg over to talk to Matt Savage. Max, it's never easy. One card away from being the World Poker Tour champion at the Bet Legends of Bike. What's your thoughts right now? I'm just happy with uh, my results. I mean, if I went into this knowing that I was going to get second, I'd take it every time. So I'm happy with what I got. And Josh is a great player. And I felt like I played very well. And the, just the cards go that. Well, you got to love the attitude, Max. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to see you again. Yeah, thank you, Matt. All right, back to you guys. Josh, I got to tell you, that was about a big ebb and flow of a final table in the World Poker Tour as we've ever seen. But I got to ask you a question. This is your first ever WPT event. You got in here by winning a $400 satellite. Did you really think on day one that you had a shot to win this poker tournament and become the Legends of Poker champion? Of course, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I like a man with confidence. Well, Josh, I'll tell you, a terrific performance you put on, not just at the final table, but all week long. Terrific. In addition to the 500,000 in cash and your $25,000 entry into the WPT World Championship, you get your name inscribed on the WPT Champions Cup with all the great players in the history of the World Poker Tour. Thank you. <laughs> Let's hear it one more time. Josh Hale, Legend of Poker Champion from San Diego, California. Kimberly, back to you. What an incredible journey. He came to this final table as the chip leader, and he leaves as a champion. Congratulations to Josh Hale, the season 11 WPT Legends of Poker champion. Join us next time as we travel to Paris and the Aviation Club de France for the Grand Prix de Paris. Until then, for Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Duns, to Matt Savage, the Royal Flush Girls, and the whole WPT team, I'm Kimberly Lansing saying, Thanks for watching. Good night. I don't understand what this is for. Here. <laughs> the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. Tonight in Paris, history is on the line as a former champion goes for his second title here at the Aviation Club in France. To do so, he'll have to battle through a tough international final table to become the first player ever to win the same event twice. The season 11 Grand Prix de Paris starts now, and it's only on the WPT. Well, the crowd all standing. He was circling the drain. They are going bare knuckles in the center of the ring. He would love to knock this loud mouth out. Oh! Everybody. Welcome to Paris and the Aviation Club du France. In the history of the WPT, no Champions Club member has been able to repeat their success in the same tournament. Now, several have tried, including Gus Hansen, Daniel Negreanu, and Antonio Esfandiari, but all have come up short. Tonight, Season 9 Grand Prix de Paris champion Theo Jorgensen goes for his second title and a chance to write his name in the record books. Now, making this final table alone was no easy task. When it started five days ago, the field was stacked with some of the best players in the world. Plus, with its re-entry format, several of them took two shots at a chance to become the season 11 Grand Prix de Paris champion. Players, merci to all of you for your continued support of the World Poker Tour and bull shots in your quest to make it to the final table. Dealers, let's shuffle up and deal. To give players the chance to re-enter if they busted, the Aviation Club split day one into two. A surprise that even defending champion Matthew Waxman was unprepared for. It's gonna go to the Lou, but apparently you can play both days and it would be kind of foolish of me not to play both. The Grand Prix de Paris is always a who's who of international pros, and for season 11, the Americans arrived en masse. Bonjour. 
some of who took two shots of making it to day two. Two late arrivals were good friends season eight player of the year Faraz Jaka and season nine Foxwoods finalist Mohsen Sharania, who had plans to play the event, but that's as far as the plan went. I don't know where I'm sleeping tonight. The plan was to figure it out at the end of the day, but now I think me and my roommate Faraz Jaka are going to go find a hotel room during our dinner break. This year's event also brought out the most notorious player to ever final table in Paris, Tony Chi. I'm going to rip you apart so hard. Surinder Suna, where is he now? You know, I'm looking for him. He's not here. He's nowhere to be seen. I'm still here, going strong. When the remaining players from both day one heats were combined, 143 players were still alive Magnifique. out of the 228 total entrants. Local player Jacques Angeval was at the top of the chip count with over 225,000. French poker pro Anthony Lelouch in second place and Champions Club member and season four Grand Prix de Paris runner-up Yuha Helpy in fifth with over 96,000. It's day two of the Grand Prix du Paris. With the Champions Cup on the line, players took their seats and settled in for a long day of poker. American poker pro Brian Collin came into the day with just 34,000 in chips and looked to be having trouble getting things going early on. But that momentum would change when he cracked Casey Castle's pocket aces to become one of the bigger stacks in the field. Yes, I am the donkey. Some French guys have been kind of like talking trash, so I wanted to mess him up all day, I don't know. But he kept playing back at me, and it's the first time I got a hand against him. And I had queens, and we went all in. He had aces for like the sixth time today. So I kind of just thought he might be messing around, and he wasn't, but I managed to get a lucky straight on the river, so the double me up. Another player with some day two mo was Mr. Tirania, who had found a place to stay and was putting his time in Paris to good use amassing chips and playing solid poker. But day two would be the end for 80 players, including season 10 Grand Prix de Paris winner, Matt Waxman, two-time WPT champion, Marvin Rettenmeyer, and season nine WPT championship winner, Scott Siever, to name a few. Despite Brian Collins' strong run, it wasn't enough to capture the top chip position for the day. That honor went to German pro Philip Philborg Grisham, who finished with over 280,000. In third place, Hollywood writer-producer Matt Salzberg ended with almost 230,000. I had deuces three times, and I made sex three straight times with them. So uh, it's been going good. Day two ended with a field of 63. Among them, top pros such as former ones to watch Jason Mercier, Andrew Lichtenberger, and Faraz Jaka. Plus, two former Grand Prix de Paris champions still in the field, Theo Jorgensen and David Benjamin. Only six would make it to the televised final table and have a shot at the title. Who will make it and become champion of the Grand Prix de Paris? Find out when our extended coverage of the play down to the final six in Paris at the Aviation Club du France continues right after this. You know, sometimes you want to work on your poker game without worrying about risking any money. That's why we love to play on ClubWPT.com, where we can play as many tournaments as we want without the fear of going broke. ClubWPT.com, never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Welcome back to Paris and the World Poker Tour's coverage of the Aviation Club du France's Grand Prix de Paris. Days three and four saw the clash of some of the best players in the world and some unexpected bust outs as the race to the final table continued. While Vince and the Royal Flush Girls took in the French countryside to visit an animal rescue center representing the WPT Foundation, play got underway for the start of day three at the Aviation Club. The 63 players who survived were a mix of top pros and amateur hopefuls looking to become the next player to etch their name on the WPT Champions Cup. Early in the day, acting as a one-man wrecking crew was Matt Salzberg. Matt, a writer and producer for the Showtime series Weeds, was making the best of his first visit to the Aviation Club. Today is like absurdly good so far. Popping uh, making some flushes. It's just been a really sick day. I busted Fabrice, ace queen suited against ace queen suited. I popped a flush. I was pretty sick. Then I popped the set against uh, Benjamin and got it in against him. And then I busted. 
know, base king against queens, I think, and ace. Just been making a lot of hands, you know? And now they're so, afraid of you. Yeah, yeah they're, they're pretty, they're, I've been trying a lot of knives, yeah, so, yeah. Only the top 27 players would cash in Paris, and the field quickly diminished throughout the day. On the edge of the bubble, some players tend to tighten up and hope that another player in the field will be the unfortunate one to bust just short of the money. Jason Mercier isn't one of those players. After raising pre-flop with four deuce of hearts, he continued to play his hand aggressively after hitting bottom pair and an inside straight draw on a board of ace, three deuce. His opponent, Frenchman Raphael Abitbol, holding ace queen for a pair of aces, was put to the test when Jason went all in on the draw heavy turn. After tanking for a considerable time, Raphael made the call and was relieved to see he had the best hand. He still had to fade a deuce, four, five, or any heart on the river to win the hand. To his amazement, he did, and crippled Jason's stack. Fortunately for Jason, he was able to hang on and avoid being the bubble boy. That honor went to early chip leader Anthony Lelouch, whose pocket kings ran into Brian Collins' pocket aces. Jason busted shortly after in 27th place. He was followed by season 10 LAPC champion Sean Jazzieri in 26th place, eliminated by reigning player of the year Joe Rock, who had an up and down day three. I did make the money. I wasn't sure if I was going to. When play ended for the day, 24 players remain, including French rapper Bruno Lopez in fourth place, Matt Salzberg in second place, and still in the chip lead, Philip Grisham, the only player to crack the million chip mark. On day four, another busy day took place along the Champs-Élysées, both on and off the felt. The final 24 players were a good mix of young American poker pros, Kyle Julius, Brian Collin, Mohsen Charania, and Andrew Lichtenberger. Two international pros, Germans Fabian Quas and Philip Grisham. Two Champions Club members, each with past history at the Aviation Club, Grand Prix de Perry winner Theo Jorgensen and Season 4 runner-up Yuha Helpy. And they were just a few of these remaining players. Fabian Quas made the first splash of the day when he knocked out Andrew Lichtenberger. Andrew went all in with King Queen offsuit and was called by Fabian's pocket trays. The tray on the flop gave Fabian a huge lead. An eight of clubs on the river sealed the deal and sent Andrew packing. Matt Salzberg continued his day three dominance, knocking out Yuha Helpy in 20th place and French pro Jean Philippe Roar in 19th place. These pots also catapulted Matt into the chip lead, which drew the attention of Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten, who had stopped by to check out the action. Theo Jorgensen also found his groove, knocking out Kyle Julius and Florian LeCant to move up the chip counts. Brian Collin, one of the early chip leaders in this tournament, finally met his match against Canadian Timothy Adams. Brian's ace six could not improve against Timothy's ace queen, and Brian was eliminated in 15th place. Timothy also busted French singer Gregoire Bosino in 11th place. In one of the biggest hands of the tournament, Joe Siroc put almost his entire stack into the pot pre-flop and was called by Theo. He still had about 40,000 held back, which led to a little ribbing from Theo. It's gonna be a hell of a comeback if you hold and win this one. But with so much committed, Joe had no choice but to put the rest in on the flop and saw that his ace three was crushed by Theo's ace king. Last year's player of the year, Joe Siroc, failed to improve and was knocked out in 10th place to pick up some player of the year points in just the fourth event of season 11. The winner of this event will take home 1,200 points and be tied atop the season 11 leaderboard with legends of poker champ, Josh Hale. When we reached the television final table bubble, one hand gave new meaning to the term nosebleed stakes. In a pot against Matt Salzberg, Timothy Adams was put to a decision on the river after Matt let out with a $45,000 bet. Timothy went into the tank when his nose actually started bleeding. While simultaneously addressing his medical issue, Timothy threw out a raise of 125,000. 
Matt quickly folded, and then Timothy tabled pocket deuces for the Stone Cold Bluff to the shock of everyone. I figured you can be bluffing there with the blood brand. That's the best move I've ever seen. Like, I figured he can never be bluffing there, right? Unbelievable. That's unfair. It's got to be, I bow down for that one. The TV table bubble busted when French player Jerome Duyeb's ace queen ran into Matt's ace king. That's it. The final table of the Grand Prix de Paris is always comprised of a very international mix of players, and tonight is no exception. Most surprising is that for the first time, no French player is seated among the final six. For more insight on our final table, let's turn to Poker Hall of Famer Mike Sexton and former tennis champ and poker expert Vince Van Patten. Mike, how impressed are you with this final table? Well, Kimberly, I'm very impressed with the players at tonight's final table. Five out of six of these players have won big time tournaments around the world. And the other guy is Matt Salzberg from LA, and he's our chip leader. Certainly the guy starting out in second chip position. Mosin Charania from Chicago is no stranger to the World Poker Tour. He has made two final tables. But the big story tonight is Theo Jorgensen from Denmark. Theo is looking to win this event for the second time, and no player in the history of the World Poker Tour has won the same event twice. So, Kimberly, We've got a bit of poker history possibly in the making tonight. We do, and Vince, of course we love it here. What makes the Aviation Club so special? Well, Kimberly, it reeks of poker history. There are statues in the hallways of poker players in pain. All you hear throughout the club are loud French accents with bad beat stories. <laughs> it is incredible. But tonight we have something else that's incredible. We have a player, Theo Jorgensen, going after his second WPT title at the same place, never been done. And he's ready to talk about his good luck charm, his father. <laughs> well, uh, there was big doubts about whether he was a lucky charm or he was a jinx. But uh, two years ago, he proved that he, he was the lucky charm. So it's, it's, it's pretty vital he's here. Thank you, Theo. Such a nice guy and uh, very humble, too. Our first place finisher tonight will take home over $500,000, including a seat to the season ending WPT World Championship and have their name added to the WPT Champions Cup. And later, we find out what poker means to the season 11 ones to watch. The start of the Grand Prix de Paris final table is moments away. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Texas Hold'em takes just a few minutes to learn and a lifetime to master. That's why we created the WPT Poker Trainer that lets you work on your game anytime you want, from anywhere you want, on your iPhone or iPad. Download your copy today. Welcome back to Season 11 on the World Poker Tour. We're in Paris at the beautiful Aviation Club de France for the final table of the Grand Prix de Paris. Yes, Mike, it is great to be back at the Aviation Club where the different cultures clash at the poker table. We are definitely not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> the cards are ready. They're being shuffled and dealt. Let's go to the felt. Well, we started four days ago with 228 players. We're now down to these six. So you see our chip leader, Matt Salzberg from the U.S., the lone amateur at the table. Winner tonight will take home over 400,000 euros and get a coveted entry into the WPT World Championship at the end of the season. Now the Andy's going to start at 2,000. The blinds are 8 and 16,000. First act, Timothy Adams from Canada. And he's going to look down at a jack 10. All right, Timothy with a quick fold. And now it's around to Mosin. He's going to fold his hand. Matt Salzberg, the Hollywood producer, writer of the show Weeds, has a pair of fours, Mike. He's a chip leader, and he's going to pop this. Makes it 35000 to go. Well, tough German pro, Philip Grissom, out. Around to Theo Jorgensen. Highly respected guy from Denmark. Won this tournament a couple years ago. Looking to take this title for the second time tonight. He's got a huge hand, ace-king, and he re-raises. He makes it 85000 to go. Fabian Quas out. Back on Matt. He's going to make the call with the fours. Vince, I gotta ask you, I know you're a little superstitious, and one thing you don't like is the way they turn the flop over here in Europe, where they do it one card at a time. You'd like to see them all at one time. I like one big plunge. If I had my preference, I'd take them all at once, but I don't let the one card at a time bother me while I'm over here. Let's see, first hand, good action. Flop comes up, jack, jack, six. Timothy would have hit a jack there. He's a little sickened by that. Uh, Theo gonna make the continuation bet. But as you can see, Matt quickly calls him. Now he's called by Matt Salzberg, the so-called amateur at the table from Hollywood. Here comes the turn card. 
Well, a 10 comes up. Oh, that just makes Timothy Adams a full house. So he's completely disgusted. <laughs> and Theo's going to slow down with his ace high. And Matt also going to check behind him, going to the river. A three comes off. Nice card for Matt. Got the best hand with Jackson fours. Action on Theo. Yeah, but if he sticks in a big bet, but he does not, he checks. Yeah, he's king. Matt checks behind him, and the Hollywood producer gets greenlit on the very first hand, takes down the pot with the fours. Well, the lone amateur extends his chip lead. What a bunch we have here tonight in Paris at this final table. Well, I don't think I've ever played a final table this tough. Phil is very good. Phil is a guy that's going to pay me off. Mosin, that guy's really good. He's tricky, he's calm. And then there's Matt. He's the only person at the table, I believe, that doesn't play professionally. Timothy plays extremely well. He pulled a sick bluff on me when his nose started bleeding. <laughs> Fabian, he's relentless, just aggression, aggression, aggression. Theo has an aggressive style that is hard to counter. All right, this is going to be a dogfight. Well, a dogfight indeed, but a good one. Really, six international star players in their own countries. Matt Salzburg, as you can see, the chip leader with over 1.9 million. And he's a 3,000 blinds of 10 and 20. Action on Philip Grissom. Philip looks down at a King Jack. And he is going to raise. Gets folded around to Timothy Adams. Now, Timothy this time with a pair of fours. How much do you start with, so? Stay the same. I don't even know what that is. You didn't look at the chip counts? No, who cares? 775. Timothy Adams has a World Series of Poker bracelet already in his young career. 26 years old, but he's going to fold the fours. And now, Mosin also not going to call with Queen 10. You're a professional. Well, Matt Salzberg's got chips. He's in the big blind, got some money in the pot, so he makes the call with the king five of spades. That's right. Well, he's a writer. He's from Hollywood. He's creative. He's trying to create something here. Will he do it? Flop comes up eight, nine, ten. Two hearts. Matt checks, and Philip has an open in straight draw, as you can see, but doesn't want to get check raised out of the pot, so. He checks also. Deuce of Diamonds comes off. Neither player. Matt not hitting, and he's just going to check. Philip, who played the one drop tournament at the World Series of Poker this year, that was a million dollar buy in poker tournament. And this guy's a big gambler, no doubt about it. You also played that, made the money, didn't you, Mike? I did, actually. It was quite fun. I want to look at this. Philip with just. Basically nothing is going to bet, and he is going to win this pot. Well, Philip, a tough player, won two European poker titles in 2011, looking to take down a WPT title tonight. They're the beautiful Royal Flush girls enjoying the moment here in Paris. Well, there's nothing like seeing a WPT event live, and when you're here, you can meet the Royal Flush girls, Mike, Kimberly, myself. Let's get back to the table. And right now, Matt Salzberg still having the chip lead with close to 1.9 million. Action on Fabian. Fabian, poker pro out of Germany. Yeah, Fabian's got a queen jack. Started this final table on the short stack, and he's still there. Fabian Quas. He got in this tournament through a satellite. Bargain basement, and he's going to raise with the queen jack. Makes it 40,000 to go. But right behind him, Timothy Adams with ace king. Oh, big hand for Timothy here. He's going to three bet it up to 82,000. Certainly is. Mosin out. And now Matt Salzberg also folding. Philip out as well and round to the big blind. Uh oh. Ooh la la. Look at this. Theo Jorgensen with the weapons of mass destruction, the pair of aces, and what a time to get them. The perfect spot to pick up two aces in the big blind. The pot's been raised and re raised in front of Theo. He is loving this. And here comes the four bet. Oh, chips and a plaque flying out there with the aces. 200,000 the bet by Theo. 
Fabian quickly folds. And Timothy has a big hand, though. Ace King. He's got to be thinking what is going on here. Oh, man. He's getting out extra plaques, extra chips. He's going to re raise. He makes it 480,000 to go. Back on Theo. I'm all in. And there you go. Come on. I got the nuts. Quick call, but Timothy's not going to like it. He's up against the one hand he doesn't want to be up against. Two aces. Now, Theo Jorgensen doesn't have the chips that Timothy has, so Timothy will still be around if he should not get extremely lucky. But what a position he's in right now. Timothy Adams slips on the banana, <laughs> and Theo Jorgensen from Denmark in great place. Right now, here's the flop. Now, flop four for Deuce. As you can see, to win this pot, Timothy's going to have to hit running king. <laughs> Nothing else will do for him. They'd split it if it came a three and a five. And right there, you see the lobby pretty full here. Watch the action on the TVs out there. Here comes the turn. Now, the deuce comes off. That's going to do it for Timothy in this pot. Theo Jorgensen going to double up and take one step closer to capturing this event for the second time. Oh, he's got to be loving this. Theo Jorgensen is going to take this pot. Well done. There's more from Paris. Stay tuned. This episode of the World Poker Tour is brought to you in part by Vegas.com. Vegas.com. Do Vegas right. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We're at the Aviation Club de France. And you know, Mike, we have been here since season one on the World Poker Tour. These tournaments are always great. Well, Vance, you're right. There's nothing quite like poker right here, smack dab in the middle of the Champs-Élysées at the Aviation Club. And you can remember back in seasons one and two, we had Christopher Johansson win, we had David Benjamin win, and that was when the Greek was at that table and all that commotion took place. <laughs> Maybe the most exciting event we've ever had in the World Poker Tour. Remember he used to call it the Isle of Crete, the blood roll, the Isle of Crete. It was insane, it was so exciting. And you know what, if you're a Club WPT VIP member, you actually get access to all those great shows here in Paris. And in addition to that, you can play all the poker you want, you can win your share, of up to 100,000 in cash and prizes every month. You can win seats out here on the World Poker Tour. ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. All right, back to the table we go. There, there you see Matt Salzberg, the lone amateur from the U.S., our chip leader with 1.8 million. But Theo Jorgensen right on his heels now in second place. Timothy, how much is that now? Just over 400. Timothy Adams on the short stack right now with just over 400,000. Mosin Sharania. Nice. Quickly fold. Now it's on Matt Salzburg. He's got an ace five. Likes to play a lot of hands. This time he's going to raise, makes it 45,000 to go. Philip is out, and now Theo Jorgensen. Well, Theo on the button, going to three bet it here with the king queen, makes it 100,000 to go. Everyone's out, but Matt, he's going to call this with his ace five. I'm not fond of this play by Matt. Colin re-raises with an ace baby card. He's trying to write his own script here. Let's see if he gets lucky. Well, he might be writing the right script, Vince. He's flopped two aces. He's got the lead. He's going to check him. Well, Theo has the ace high straight draw, as you can see, and bets. Makes the continuation bet of 125. A quick call by Matt. Matt has the nut flush draw. Not re-popped, and here's the turn, seven of hearts. Well, Matt checks. Theo reaching for more chips. Just has a king high, but gonna fire a second shell. At least it looks like it. And indeed he does. This time he bets 275,000. And there you see Matt fumbling with his chips a little bit, but he does make the call and makes it pretty quick. He certainly does to the disturbance of Theo. Eight of hearts on the river. Theo doesn't hit. Matt checks again. Well, Theo only has a king high, and look at this, Vince. Oh, boy. Look at those dangerous-looking plaques coming out. Well, those are 100,000 each. Love the plaques. That's what distinguishes European events from American events. Besides the colored money of the euros that they use, but at the table, the plaques are the big guns. 600. Look at this, Vince. A three-barrel bluff by Theo Jorgensen. Oh, man, he is relentless. And now, Matt Salzburg has to squirm in his seat here. Well, you can't blame him, Ben. Virtually all it can be is a bluff here. 
This would be the call of the week in Paris if Match make this call, but it's tough to do with a horrible kicker. This is the problem when you're calling re-raises with ace and baby cards. Even if an ace comes out, you're pretty much frozen in the pot. Boy, the two chip leaders. Well, there you see Theo's dad over there nervously watching his son. He'd really be nervous if he knew what Theo had. Oh, and the producer's gonna call it a wrap. He cannot compete. Damn it. He mucks his hand. Well, Theo shows the bluff. Beautifully done by Theo Jorgensen. And folks, there's not many players that will fire three shells at a pot. They bluff on the flop, bluff on the turn, bluff on the river. Theo Jorgensen did it. He has taken the chip lead. He is well on his way to becoming a two-time Grand Prix de Paris champion. Brilliantly done by the man from Denmark. For the past few seasons, we've followed young, talented poker pros as they begin to make a name for themselves in the poker world. Well, tonight, we find out what poker truly means to them in this edition of Once to Watch. We're the ones to watch. We're the ones to watch. To watch, wants to watch. Poker to me is just the greatest game ever. Sean Deeb has quite the reputation in poker. Clearly, he's one of the best. The typical grinder kid who has a lot of money when they're young. Sean Deeb, I'd love to sit down with him for three weeks and tell me what I'm doing wrong. That'd be amazing. He's an absolute uh, huge grinder, has done really, really well in tournaments. Sean Deeb, um, the knock on him is that he wins everything online but nothing live, so I'm sure he'll be looking to change that. I come from a family of entrepreneurs. My grandfather, my father, and most of my family have all been um, small private business owners. I'm Sean Deeb, and welcome to Ted's Fish Run. Ted's Fish Fry is a family business that's been operated for about 60 years now. Fried seafood place with a whole host of things on the menu. And we have five locations currently, all in the greater Albany area. It's been in our family's name from the start, and I owe everything that I've gotten to become through that business. My brother Bill taking the orders up front. Order crabs, catch them on your fries. I think it'd be really cool to see Sean deep frying now. <laughs> with one of those little hats. <laughs> Like when we called in orders, we had no paper. We would just remember everything. I think a lot of my memory in poker, I owe to the early age of working there and remembering 20 people's orders in a row. Hey, why don't you grab the dining room, too? Come on, grab it. He wants me to clean the dining room. The only thing I was good at, and I still wasn't even good at that. Sean is uh, certainly capable of doing a whole lot of things. Relentless, knows every spot, takes every spot. Not scared, uninhibited. He did what very few players have done and took his licks in order to get good. And now he's not only one of the best no limit tournament players, but he's a great cash game player and can play any game very, very well. There's always something new to learn. There's always some new way to play. And that's the greatest thing is the game is a hybrid. And it's like a virus that keeps changing, improving, getting stronger. And uh, it's so much fun to be a part of the industry. So after that three-barrel bluff, Theo Jorgensen, now the chip leader with over 2.4 million in chips. Matt Salzberg drops to second place with just 1.5 million. They are playing fast here in Paris. Back to the felt we go, Philip Grissom. Wow, he looks down at a huge hand. Pair of ladies, it's the Queens. But he is raised to 40,000. Theo out, and now Fabian. Fabian's got the King Jack, 30-year-old poker pro out of Germany, gotten this tournament through a satellite. That's right, Vince. Everybody else had to pony up 7,500 euros or about $10,000 US to play this event. I'm all in. Oh boy, he's gonna push all in with this. He is going with it right here. Timothy Adams out, Mosin now. Can't play. Matt also going out, so back on the man with the queens. Well, Phillips quickly calls him with the two queens. That was quick. And Fabian's going to have to have some help. Disturbingly quick. Awfully quick. If he's going to stay alive in this tournament. Fabian just playing that Philip didn't have a big hand, that he was messing around. His assumption wrong as he sips his coffee. That's got to disturb your stomach at this point. Well, if he didn't win this pot, Vince, he could go out to the Champs-Élysées and be sipping coffee at a sidewalk cafe. King Jack up against Queens. Here we go with the first three. Flop is a safe three, nine, Jack. Well, Fabian got some help with the two Jacks, but... She mistook it. 
Going to have to catch a king or a jack or two runners to win this pot. It'll be two diamonds or two cards to make a straight. Doesn't happen. That was a really upsetting card. Bobby and Quas from Germany must catch a king or a jack to stay alive in this tournament. Otherwise, he'll be heading down to the Champs Elysees and wandering the streets. Can he get lucky, Fabian? Said, uh, fifth place, I go party. Here comes the river. <laughs> so All that's right. going to do it for yeah. Fabian Quas, 30-year-old pro from Germany. Got in this tournament by winning a $700 satellite. <laughs> out tonight Fabiano. in sixth place. That is right. A gentleman shakes hands. He picks up 75,000 euros here this evening. We are down to five players, and right now, Fabian He's going to talk about his loss. And I have 15 big blinds. I think it's pretty standard. Um, I didn't get to play much today, but throughout the whole tournament, I'm pretty happy with my player. That was German player Fabian Quas, who is leaving our final table in sixth place. Plenty more action when we return to the final table of the Grand Prix de Paris. Stick around. The WPT Foundation is dedicated to supporting great charities around the world. Now you can help the WPT Foundation raise money for some great global causes. Check out all the incredible prizes, trips, and VIP experiences available through our online auctions at WPTFoundation.org. Season 11 of the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com, where VIP members can win their share of $100,000 in cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. But the unique thing about the aviation club is that it's private compared to a big casino anywhere else. Or this is so small, so it's kind of cozy. The aviation club is very upscale because you're still playing in these casinos with all the smoke and slot machine sounds and people dressed like slobs and shorts and sandals. It's kind of a unique experience because it's kind of like you're playing in an old gentlemen's gambling society or something. You just walk in and you can kind of feel like the history and stuff. It's cool, it's unique, I like it. I like Paris. What's well, not to like in Paris? And we're in the center, so it can't really be that. Welcome back to Paris. Well, Vance, all players love coming to the Aviation Club de France because it does have that James Bond ambience about it. It is fantastic. We're enjoying it here. As five-handed poker continues at the final table of the World Poker Tour, let's go to the felt. Action on our chip leader, Theo Jorgensen. And right now, Theo Jorgensen, our chip leader, picks up a pair of sevens, Mike, just like that. Yeah, I've got the two walking sticks. Going to raise it up to 45,000. Timothy Adams from Canada goes away. Mosin out. Well, now we're around to Matt Salzberg, who looks down at the ace nine of diamonds, and he is going to make the call. Philip out. What the f is going on with you? This is, Matt wants this revenge is. on Theo, perhaps, from that last debacle with the aces. And here comes the flop, five, six, deuce, and he gets two diamonds. Well, we can see some action here. Chuck. Matt's flopped the nut flush draw. Theo has the over pair. Matt checks. As you can see, Theo is going to bet, and I'm guessing it's going to get check raised here. Theo bets 58,000. Matt with the four flush. Oh, yeah, he's going to put in a raise. Yeah, that's what you do with the net flush draw. Goes to 150,000 back on the Dane. Now, you have an over pair, but you're saying to yourself, would well, this guy have called a raise before the flop if he had junk cards like that on the flop? Not so sure. Well, he's going to gamble, makes the call with the over pair. So Theo does make the call. That's praying for a diamond. Can he get low? He gets a diamond. The diamond comes off. The board also pairs. Not a good card at all if you're sitting in Theo's seat. But if you're sitting in Matt's seat and just made the nut flush, you're quite content. Oh, $175,000 content. That's what Matt's betting, and he's going to get the action. He gets the call by the Dane. Well, Theo quickly calling there. Not sure what, he just doesn't even want to look at the river card, <laughs> and I don't blame him. King of Diamonds comes off, so he didn't want to see a diamond for sure. Now there's four diamonds out there. Action is on Matt. And Matt picking up a couple plaques. That's 200,000 and bets. Yeah, he's not going to let up on the Dane. Makes a comfortable bet. 
Well, Theo's in that spot that Matt was in a minute ago. Basically, all it can beat is a bluff here. You know, one thought that you might have in your mind here, if you're sitting in Theo's seat, is, you know, I stole a punt off this guy and showed it to him. Is he going to do the same thing to me? That's the problem when you show a guy a bluff earlier, because now you're thinking maybe he's going to try to bluff you back here. And basically, with these two sevens and no diamond, that's all you can beat is a bluff. This looks like 200 out the window. On the other hand, I'm a curious guy. Oh boy, he's going through torture now. Theo's actually starting to look a little like Gus Hansen with his mannerisms. A little bit. Now well, there's the curiosity call. He does make the call. That's only sort of a hero call, but it's not gonna work here. Matt shows him another flush, and Theo says, hmm. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. There's Theo's dad, Gert. He looks like a bouncer from anywhere. Tough-looking guy. I want to get on his bad side, that's for sure. Theo, of course, takes his dad. Every time he makes a final table, he flies him in just for intimidation. <laughs> All right. And he's at 3,000. Blinds are up to 12 and 24,000. Back to this hand motion with a quick fold. Matt also folding. And now it's around to Philip. Philip on the button now. Looks down at the Queen 10, and he's gonna raise it. This is Phillip's fourth WPT event. Now Theo goes out, but... On. Timothy Adams all in with Ace Queen. Oh, Yep. <laughs> That's not wasting your time, guys. 220 on top, uh, 270 to start. Oh. And the German is contemplating this. Well, Philip trying to contemplate the odds here. I think I gamble a little bit. Saying, is there a chance a guy could have two sevens or two eights where I could be in a race here? He's a big gambler, Philip. Played the one drop event. I want to kick you out anyways. Pardon? I want to kick you out anyways. Let's speed it up a little bit, huh? 220 to call, yeah? Looks like he's going to make this call and try to get lucky. And he's going to have to get very lucky because he's dominated, and he does make the call, and he's not going to like it when Timothy turns up his hand. Ace Queen versus Queen 10. Good place for the Canadian Timothy Adams to double up. Timothy all smiles right now. And why wouldn't you be? You're short stacked. You're all in with a dominating hand. And the flop is, yeah, you hit the ace just like that ace nine three on the flop. So Philip going to have to catch two runners to win this pot now. Doesn't happen as a deuce of spade comes off. Yeah, right. Timothy Adams from Canada is going to double up here. Ten on the river. There we go. Timothy quite content to double up. He's traveling through Europe with a bunch of friends just to play poker. It's got to be exciting. I tried it, guys. Sorry. You tried. Tried hard. You look at Philippe's hair, Mike, right there. You know that must have been a mohawk about four months ago. <laughs> and now it's just uh, a bad wig look. I don't know. Probably had it all purple and pink. Who knows? We've seen them here on the poker tour before. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with Philip's hair, Vince. You guys with perfect hair, you're always criticizing the rest of us oh. on our haircuts. Just a little observation, my friend. Just, just thinking outside of the box there. All right, back to this hand. We got a couple folds, and now Theo Jorgensen has a queen 10. This Dane loves the action. 52. Well, he just saw Philip get burned by a queen 10 in the last pot, but thinks maybe it'll work this time, so he raised it. Timothy out, and now Mosin with an ace 10. Well, he doesn't three bet it, he just makes the call here. He's from Chicago. He's been relatively quiet at this final table, but I'm telling you, this guy has game, and he'll be a force to be reckoned with before this night is over. Mark it down. He's in a good place right now. He's 10 versus Queen 10, and the flop comes up 9, 8, 3. Well, no help to either player. It does give Theo a gut shot straight draw, so I guess it is a help for him. And it goes check, check. Well, he's got the heart of Gus. Here he is going to bluff here. Again, this time with just the Queen high. Makes it 120,000 to go. Now, there's no facial expression now, though, because he doesn't want... Give a tell away. Well, will Motion make this call with just ace high? It'd be a tough one to make, but look at this, Vince. And you. He has done it. Got it. 
What a call by Mosin. He put the pieces of that puzzle together just perfectly. Beautifully done by the young guy that dropped out of law school. Now you don't want to upset Gert. Mosin, take it easy. Oh, very intimidating man. Mosin making a great call with ace high. With that hand, we end our first hour of coverage at the Aviation Club du France. Mike, what do you think has been the biggest surprise we've seen so far? Well, honestly, Kimberly, I haven't seen any big surprises so far, but I wasn't expecting any. These are top-notch poker players. They all play really, really well, and that's what I was expecting to see. Now, as a player, I love to see things like the three-barrel bluff that we saw Theo pull off to win a big pot and the ace I call that Mosin just made to win a pot. These guys are playing the game. I can't wait to see how it comes out. Yeah, it's only just the beginning. Vince, who should we keep an eye on when play resumes? Well, I think you got to keep an eye on the Hollywood producer, Matt Salzberg. I mean, he is the producer of a major show in Hollywood called Weeds, and apparently he has not been smoking the weeds tonight because he is playing sharp. He is focused. He is playing excellent poker. He's playing with the big boys, and he's doing it well. Thank you, guys. Join us next time from Paris for more of Season 11's coverage of the Grand Prix de Paris. Until then, for Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, the Royal Flush Girls, and the whole WPT team, I'm Kimberly Lansing saying thanks for watching. Good night. I don't understand what this is for. <laughs> <laughs> the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. Where were you last night? What happened? Most incredible thing ever happened to me last night. I'm walking around Paris and all of a sudden this car pulls up in front of me with two beautiful girls saying, come, come. So I did. I went to the car. That's where you're dreaming? No, this is not a dream. You gotta listen to me carefully. They take me to the aviation club, but my, it's not now. It was back in time. It was like 60 years ago. I was playing with legendary poker players. I was playing with Titanic Thompson. I was playing with Amarillo Slim when he was young and very slim. I played with Bobby Riggs, we played cards, we drank, we had a great time. It was the most amazing thing I've sounds ever Sounds like been. you're drinking too much tequila. No, no, I know, I know it sounds crazy, but it happened, it's gonna happen again. Go with me tonight. Vince, how long are we gonna be out here? We've been here over an hour now. Shh. Well, it really is, Kimberly. That's because these guys are terrific poker players. These are guys that have won big time tournaments around the world. The big story, though, at this final table is Theo Jorgensen from Denmark. He's trying to win this event for a second time and become the first player in WPT history to win the same event twice. Can he make poker history tonight? That's the question. And Vince, what about the other players? Well, we've got a surprise package here tonight. We have a Hollywood producer, Matt Salzberg. He's a TV producer and writer. He writes for that show called Entourage, and he also writes a show called Weeds. And tonight, he'd like to write a new TV series called Matt Wins Paris, and he has a shot, Mike. <laughs> Kimberly, he is good. He's playing with the big boys. Well, he made it in Hollywood. I guess uh, next up, Paris, right? We have word that cards are about to go back into the air, so let's get down to the felt. We started four days ago with 228 players. We're now down to these five. The lone amateur at the table, Matt Salzberg from the U.S., our chip leader. A very exciting. Five players left. Winner's going to take home 400,000 euros, which is approximately 520,000 U.S. And here we go. Action on the Canadian, Timothy Adams. Looks down to the jack three. He folds it. Over to Mosin from Chicago. Very tough pro. Yep, he dropped out of law school to play poker. He's got ace nine of spades, and he will raise. Uh, wasn't a bad idea, Vince, because he made 1.8 million in 2012 by taking down an EPT event in Monte Carlo. That's Salzburg out, but look at this. The German here, Philip Grissom, he makes it 135,000 with just king four. Well, it just shows you how aggressive these young guys are, Vince. Three betting a guy with a king four offsuit. Theo Jorgensen out. Who did you start the hand with? 900,000. Back around to Mosin. Well, Mosin's making the good call. The German doesn't like it. Here we go with the flop. Vince, I know you're like most Americans and most players that can't stand it, the way they deal the flop here one card at a time. Well, they do it differently here. In Paris, of course. It is 5-9 jack. Mosin hits the nines. Yeah, he's got middle pair with top kicker, but there you can see Philip. You three bet with nothing before the flop. You're going to make a continuation bet on the flop. And that's what Phillip's doing here. 
Yes, 130,000, Mike. Well, he does make it, and look at this. A quick, relaxing call, it looks like, by Mosin. And yes, that's the case. He's got second pair with top kicker. Calls him, and here comes the turn card. Seven of hearts comes off. Will Phillip continue to fire? That's the question. His problem is he just doesn't have that many more chips to keep firing blanks. Yeah, he is going to slow down. He has checked it into Mosin. Mosin content to make the check as well. Here we go to the river. Well, the board pairs fives. Well, Philip knows there's no hand he can beat at this point. The question is, does he want to bluff at it and burn up more chips? The answer is no. Well, they both check again. Well, Mosin's going to take this pot down with the two nines, and Philip's saying to himself, mm. Not a good spot to bluff. So Mosin from Chicago, Illinois, 27 years old. His 28th WPT event is going to take this pot down. Chalk one up to the Chicago Pro. My first final table at the WPT was in Foxwoods two years ago. And I came into the final table in third. And it was a pretty tough final table. It was Tom Marchese, Kevin Stammen, and Jeff Forrest. And the blinds were so high. Got into a pretty normal standard spot. Mullen. Both picking up mid pairs and moving all in like most guys would do. Gonna need a little bit of luck. I just got unlucky, didn't suck out, and I was pretty surprised I didn't get there. And then I ended up getting sixth place, so it was like really quick. I was very excited and I busted in an hour. Just like that, Mosin Charania out in sixth place. So I'm gonna try to make sure I make it all the way through this time. Well, he is a talented young player. He actually dropped out of law school to play poker, Mike. Yeah, he majored in finance and economics at the University of Illinois. He was classmates there. What do you got next? 